Howdy, humans. Hope everybody's having a good day today. Hmm. My mouth. I, I felt like my mouth was moving a little weird, but maybe I'm. Maybe it's just how fast I'm talking. Blah, 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 blah. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could, if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not, if my tracking's a little wonky, I'll just fucking close and reopen the app real quick. <laughs> But I hope everyone's had a good day. If anybody was uh, around for when I was uh, collabing with Miller earlier, thank you for showing up. I had a good time over there. Had a great time uh, gushing about Majora's Mask. <laughs> mm. Let me double check I'm not muted. It's going to be embarrassing if I am. Okay, I'm not. I've been really scared of getting muted lately because I've had to use my mute button like more than I ever have just because of um, the sick... Or the allergies or whatever the fuck I have. Just perpetuating my uh my respiratory system. So I keep having to press it, but that increases the chance of something going wrong. Cause this keyboard is shit. This keyboard is ass. Y'all can't see it, but I'm holding it up with one hand. It's wireless. It's light. It's very battery efficient. But that's because it keeps shutting its fucking self off, shutting off half its fucking fucking functionality. If I don't use it for like fucking five seconds, it's annoying. Annoying. Fucking hate this shit. I should have. Uh, I should have made sure to make my, sure my sound effects were connected when I uh, when I did that. Whoopsie doopsie. Is my model lagging? Damn. Text going all kinds of wonky right now. There we go. But yeah. Today has been a good day today. I mean, I've, I've been having a lot of good times with my friends lately. It makes me happy. Make me happy. Make me a happy dragon. I like being a happy dragon. Happy dragon's a good dragon. Happy dragon is a dragon that won't get depressed and lay in bed or in DoorDash for every waking hour of the day, wasting all of his money. That's what I did last year. Maybe you use DoorDash less, though. Ugh. It's just... Ugh, fucking hell, man. It's nice when you just want to get a couple of drinks from a 7-Eleven, and you don't have to get up. <laughs> like, you just want... You just want to... You just want some Pepsi, Gatorade. Like, you don't care. You know you're going to drink it all eventually. You don't feel like you're wasting money. But then sometimes you'll get up to a point where you don't want to order all that. And yeah, just bleh. I really need to stop. Ugh, but I have reasons for why I don't like leaving my room too often, unfortunately. Hopefully those reasons fix themselves soon. Man, that's a bit of a personal thing. So I won't go too much yeah, deep into that. Well, all right, we are going to go deep into though is we're going to go ahead and get back into the uh, Ace of Investigation featuring Miles Edgeworth in Shoe Gum. Let's go ahead and switch over real quick. There I look at it all nice and purdy. <clears throat> My very, very legal <coughs> modded DS. With my very legitimate copy of Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Last time we left off, um, forgot her fucking name. Hold on, let me look at the organizer. Profiles to Nero. Last time we were playing, to Nero uh, got arrested as the primary suspect. Uh, Cammy's boobs. Uh, this guy. Who speaks in wingdings and Francisca's back? Damn, Francisca's nineteen. I forgot how young she was. I thought she was in comparison to like everyone else. Like Tenero's older than her. <laughs> and fucking these little whippersnappers just fucking pulling her around by a whip. Kind of sad. <clears throat> All right, I gotta do gumshoes voice again. Hold on, gonna get out a couple big coughs. <laughs> okay, cool, my mic didn't mute for that. 
It's mutant now. Yeah, you know, that's a good way for me to check, actually. When I mute my mic, it disappears off the... And the little uh, scroll bar will grow or shrink, depending on that. I wonder if that works for Freak Show, too. Hold up. It does. I like that. I'll use that. I'll use that from now on. I'll use that from now on to determine if my shit's working or not. So if I mute gets bigger gotcha <clears throat> uh, rye bread welcome in cc good to see you you were in the middle of the stream it was very appreciated sorry we, we, we i felt kind of bad because you and a couple of other people were like posting a lot in chat but like we were just so into the conversation like i didn't want to i was reading everything but like i didn't want to <laughs> i didn't want to just interrupt me like oh well um so and so is saying in chat that's kind of the issue with collabs. Like, you can't really, like... Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, Max Storm, for the follow. That's very appreciated. Welcome to Dragon's Gash Valley. I hope you enjoy your time here. Uh, but, yeah, it's just... That's kind of the thing with collabs. You just kind of... You don't want to, like, be rude as, like, a guest, but also, like, you want to, like, look at chat and acknowledge chat because, you know, streamer, but... It's just kind of hard because you can't really like acknowledge chat without like completely breaking the conversation with the other person. And then like you do like by the time they finally have stopped talking and they finish their thoughts and you've been, you know, polite and like a decent human being when it comes to talking to somebody, then like the conversation just completely shifted off of whatever chat was originally talking about. And now they're on to another thing. And yeah, to I mean, I just accepted that with collabs, though, because there's not really a way around it. Ugh. The priority should be on the content, I suppose. Just new, relatively newbie streamer talking about streaming things. It's kind of a thing that I've noticed with myself. Is that I really focus and talk, like to talk about streaming as like a medium in the grand scheme of things. Like I, it, it, it's like. It's like um like a music producer, like talking about like uh the aircraft, you know? Like that's kinda how I am when I talk about streaming. But for some people I can get a little iffy because you know Twitch is like a hyper competitive environment and it fucking sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm supposed to be playing a video game right now. I should do that. Just just a thought. <laughs> wow, so this is the cargo hold, huh? I'm running down the stairs. Fuck, I tripped. <laughs> so many suitcases. This plane is a special model. It has both a super large cargo hold and extra luxurious first class seating. And an elevator, somehow. I still don't understand how that works. So, this is the serial scene of the murder. There is certainly a high probability of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, sir. Lower deck cargo hold. Investigation start. Stop narrating, Gumshoe. You got it, boss. Alright, let's talk to Franny. Hello, Franny. You arrived at the scene of the crime before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began to direct the investigation. Oh, I love this case. It's awesome. I'm enjoying it a lot so far. This is a nice case. It's got some good twists and turns. Also, Cammy's boobs. I get to have a little bit of immaturity every stream as a treat. Hmm? You immediately began to direct the investigation. It seems to me that you were already here at the airports for something besides the murder. Yes, I was. Why at this airport? I've been following a very large and involved governmental international crime. But it's much too large for one person to take on alone. I've kind of given her like a Frieza voice and I'm kind of all about it. <laughs> so it was decided that I should form a joint investigation with Interpol. Interpol is involved? It's a top secret operation so I can't really tell you more than I already have. All right, so that's it for Franny in the meantime. Hello, sir. Have you noticed anything strange happening around here? 
No, sir, I haven't noticed a thing. I'm not sure he meant to sound so oblivious. Briefcase. It's what the victim checked in, sir. So this suitcase belonged to Mr. Hicks. I don't think he'd mind if I took a closer look. There's nothing out of the ordinary in here, sir. Wait, a file? And there's a photo of Miss Von Karma in it, sir. Looks like a profile on Franziska. Why would Mr. Hicks have a file on her? Alright. Check out the suitcases. Holy suitcases, Mr. Edgeworth! It's like an all-you-can-use suitcase fair! These all must be leftover ones they couldn't sell. The ones the company is planning to dispose of after this flight is over. This paint job is really cool, don't you think? It practically screams Otzi! Oh, why not purchase one then? I'm sure it will bring you much happiness. You think so? Then maybe I will. Let's see here. Twelve hundred dollars! I think I'll pass. And Mrs. Tanira wonders why they don't sell. You need two jobs just to buy one. Again, how is she buying these? We talked about this last time, with the average salary of like a, uh, of like what a flight attendant is. And like, even assuming that like her shifts were like a highball number of hours, like 12, it would still, like, she still wouldn't be making enough to buy one per flight. <laughs> it definitely looks like one is missing. Hmm? What is this brittle substance I'm stepping on? It's a bunch of glass fragments? Let's see here. Bed sheets. Keeping track of this many pieces of cargo must be very taxing on the cargo crew. The show brings back memories of when I worked as a part-time mover, sir. But look in his eyes, he's waiting for me to ask about the rest of the story. And no matter how he pours on the puppy eyes, I have no intention of doing so. <laughs> No, Gumshoe, you gotta you gotta completely dump all of your thoughts on people immediately, because that's what I do. Everyone loves me for that. Totally. <laughs> Everyone loves you info dumping your hyperfixations in life story. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time. It doesn't drive people away. Anyways. <laughs> nah. All sorts of boxes are piled up here. This one says flammable. Oh, this one says flammable. And this one says pharmaceuticals. This one says for exorcism use only. Just what kind of operation is this airline running? You know, on the topic of that previous conversation, I retweeted a tweet the other day. I was like, man, the culture of, man, that's crazy. And who asked and stuff like that really stopped people from being able to talk about their interests in a healthy way. But nobody's ready to have that conversation. And I keep thinking about it. Because by God, it's fucking true. Okay. I don't think there's much else for me to investigate around here. Right now. Up oh, the elevator. Hello. Ooh, I just love pushing the buttons on elevators and crosswalk symbols. Here, yeah, you should give it a try, sir. Go on, push it. Ignore you on the right of the elevator. The elevator is currently stopped on the first floor, detective. It can't move. Oh, yeah. I guess nothing would happen if you pushed it now. Well, nothing would happen normally anyway without the special key card. Both the door to the attendance room and the elevator's control panels require a key card, which makes it impossible for a passenger to come down here. Alrighty. Franny! This man is stalking you. What will you do? That is the wrong thing. Wait, shit. Do I not actually have the, um... Thing? Let me look at this. Oh, shit. Hold up. Hmm. Just as Miss Tenero said, the timestamp says she bought the suitcase at 5.40 a.m. Um... Damn, in the lower part? Nope. I guess that's it for this. I was hoping there'd be something on the back. Damn. 
flames. Virginian cloth. I don't think I've taken a good look at this yet. I don't think so. Could there be this much blood on this piece of cloth? Was the victim wrapped in it at some point? According to Mr. Leblanc, this textile is fairly famous. What a waste. Hmm. In the suitcase, but we inspected that earlier. Alright, guess I need to do logic first. Let's see what we got. We got a lot of shit. Victim's glasses are broken. Why were they broken during the murder? Here's an easy one. I hope. Yay! I think we can safely conclude that these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses! Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of his glasses lenses. Ergo, the victim was here, just as I suspected. So you're saying that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Perhaps it's a bit early to draw that conclusion. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed considerably. All that's left is to find the murder weapon. Profile on Francisca, Interpol. Fuck it. It's reasonable. Now why would Mr. Hicks have a pr documents profiling Franziska? Oh, I know! I bet he's a big fan of Miss Von Gama, sir! Franziska said that she had come to his airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, maybe Mr. Hicks had heard she was coming here and followed her. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was, in actuality, Interpol Agent Hicks. I think Francisca has some explaining to do. There we go. Truth behind X. You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you in the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so he could recognize you when he ran it. Which makes him not Mr. Hicks, but rather Interpol Agent Hicks. Isn't that correct? I should have known you to figure it out, Miles. But it looks like they got to him in first. So you really did come here to receive an interval, Agent Ben? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. <laughs> Illegal bedsheets. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. He went to have a con undercover to investigate this crime. And it was I who put him on the case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he had landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. I think we now have a pretty definitive evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. But what was he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage! He was smuggling cheese at the Brazil. <laughs> nah, man, nah, nah, nah. He'd be smuggling video games in the Brazil. That That's the... That's the real fucking moneymaker there. Really. <laughs> uh, fucking tariffs, bro. You can uh, actually, I don't know. Where the, where the fuck is, where the fuck is Circuit? I need him to confirm, like, what's, where are the big smuggling rings in Brazil? Circuit, if you can hear me, throw twos at me, please. Here, I'll even give you ammo. <laughs> present, he is present. Why are the big smuggling rings, uh, rings in Brazil? Also, welcome to stream. Both you and Kimono. <laughs> Uh, point fifty caliber rifles. Is that true? Well, we'll figure out. <laughs> I don't actually know. Damn, you don't know all. You don't know all the underground crime activity of your country circuit. God, <laughs> outside drugs. <laughs> Is cheese a drug? Is cheese a drug in Brazil? I need confirmation so I can laugh at kimono or otherwise. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. They find it useful when the wear police operation comes down on them. Jesus is not a drug in Brazil, but it was at my school. <laughs> uh, you know what? Fair. Fair. I could see that happening. 
Hey, yo, man. Hey, yo, you got that mozzarella? You got that Gouda? You got that... <sighs> Fuck, dude. I learned about this recently. There's, like, a cheese. By the way, this is gonna be a little gross for anyone, so, like, uh, cover your ears for, like, 30 seconds. But, like, there is a cheese that's, like... They have, like, flies lay their eggs in it and have the maggots, like, eat the inside of the cheese. And it's, like, all goopy and mushy and there's like maggots and shit in it it's like a, a delicacy in some places but it's like illegal in a lot of places so there's like entire rings dedicated to this cheese and like uh, uh, oh yeah i heard about that one yeah i learned about it on uh salmonella's recent video <laughs> salmonella just shows up and fucking jump scares me some days people do some crazy shit to cheese only cheese yeah i mean cheese by itself is suspect it's like fucking like so, fucking like milk curds that we decided to like, hey, let's throw some fucking like bacteria and yeast on this shit. And then it, it turns into that like cheese by itself is already fucking weird. So like, yeah, I, I'm not all too surprised. Cheese already has a weird as fuck past. Ugh. Well, thank you for your information circuit <laughs> maggot cheese <laughs> yep it exists it's illegal but like it's a delicacy and like there are literal illegal rings dedicated to selling this cheese and it's like it's not small either it's like three it's like a like the estimates are like the s smuggling ring is like three million worth three million dollars for for this fucking for maggot cheese like, bruh. <laughs> why, why, why? Do people really have nothing better to do with their time than eat the weirdest shit imaginable? Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say much. I played the Gourmand campaign in Rain World. That that entire thing was just eating weird shit. Yeah. Uh, Kas Kasumatsu is its name, apparently. Yeah, that's what it was called. That's what it was called in the video. It's the it, it it's gross. I don't want to know what it looks like. I I'll, I'll take Salmonella's shittily drawn MS Paint depictions of it before I actually want to look at the cheese itself. Maybe he had a picture of it, but I didn't pay too much attention to it. I didn't want to pay too much attention to it. Uh, maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. Ow! Agent Hicks came here for a work-related reason. Of that, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Francisco, do you know exactly how he intended to pursue his investigation? No, unfortunately I was going to find out from him after he landed. I see. This raises another question. A normal passenger cannot can't access the cargo hold on their own. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew and entered the cargo hold with that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments and his broken glasses are a testament to that. And then... Killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases and... They entered the elevator but while they were riding up. The plane hit that patch of turbulence. Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open and Agent Hicks' body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere explains why there was some money scattered all over the elevator floor. Like, the other half of that was a lot of guesswork. But I guess there was, I guess there was a little else to do with that. I mean, why else was Bi be spilled out? <laughs> like, we really jumped from point A to point B on that one, I feel. <laughs> I was like, wait, 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 wait. Where, where was the, where was all the evidence of this? <laughs> I'm wrong. Is probably what happened. But <laughs> that was a lot of shit we filled in the blanks for. Whatever. <clears throat> what really, sir? I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth. But the killer can be none other than Miss Rhoda Tanero. was a crew member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. 
But the point to keep in mind is the key card that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. Alright, let's see here. As a crew member, any one of them could have shown you to to the cargo hold, but the point is to keep them up. Tell us to be able to come down here. The only person with such a high level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. Alright, let's look at her evidence. The thing is, like, the more certain the statement, like, asserts itself, that's more where I start to, that's more where I start my attention. This at, Mr. Acmex was there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. 5.40 a.m. And his body was found at 6.15. We that the captain didn't have cargo access. Yeah, that's what's fucking with me. Just looking at this. It's been a week. Let me review my evidence. And took his phone. Refueling in Zingfa. A brief stop from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. to transfer cargo and refuel at the tran. Wait a minute. So they will be making a brief stop to refuel and transfer cargo in the Republic between five, 4 and 5. Wouldn't that be a. Wouldn't that be a chance? It's possible. But it was between four and five, and he was back in his seat again at five, though. I don't know. I'm going to need to remember that. It's a, it's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? There's not a single flaw in Francisca's reasoning. However, there must be something I can work with that I can draw out of her. So, in other words, press. Hold it. it might be true, but they could be anyone, including Miss Mila or even the captain. Don't be a fool. A plane without a pilot in the cockpit is like a horse without a rider. Crop and hand, much like Scruffy over there. Hey! I can't disagree with her on that. Detective Gumshoe does always need a guiding hand. Very well, then what about the other flight attendant, Miss Meal? Ha! Ah, I thought you might ask about her. But the point to keep in mind is the keycard that allows the elevator to come down here. Press that. Why would such important things like the keycard be entrusted to only one person? According to Camming Neal, Rota Tiniro is in charge of most of the important stuff. And what exactly is Miss Meal in charge of? Chatting it up with that foolish captain, apparently. She was being so foolishly foolish that I didn't want to ask what her other duties were. Yeah! I understand how you feel, but whipping me was uncalled for. In the end, the only one who could have left Agent Hicks, let Agent Hicks into the hold was Rota Tiniro. Keep in mind is the key card is that allow keep in mind is the key card that allows the elevator to come down here. But well, it's highly likely the key card was stolen from Miss Tanero. It's highly likely? Is that possibility the best you can come up with? I mean we kind of had a whole fucking <laughs> We kinda of had a whole fucking deal <laughs> with um the, the turbulence and knocking out of the suitcase. And all the money and stuff. Uh, that, that was a lot of possibilities that we just accepted as fact. <laughs> and call yourself a disciple of my father. 
Yes, well, well, I don't have any evidence. I... Be quiet. You're a disgrace. There's more evidence pointing the roof's road at Nero, you know. It's not just that the key card that gives it away. Are you talking about the murder weapon? The Mr. Ifly piggy bank? Yes, she's also the only person with a key to open that display case. Held the murderous bank. This was taken out of the display case in the in-flight shop after the turbulence. Hold it. Well, that is a fake. Stop right there, Miles Edgeworth. You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring. If you must keep on insisting that it's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Speeches, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that I've searched the, that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty handed. There must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined for to help us authenticate the authenticity of the weapon? I mean, the body. Francisca, I think you were too quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes, we don't even have the autopsy results yet. How could I not say that you made a snap judgment when you have yet to even see that the wound on Agent Hicks's head is consistent with the murder weapon? Scruffy! Yes, sir. Contact the medical examiner's office at once. I wish to hear the results of Agent Hicks's autopsy. Yes, sir. Up the stairs I go. <laughs> and not trip. We, we got a big problem, Mr. Edwards, sir. What is it, Detective? They're still doing the autopsy, but they said they already know this one thing for sure. Report. Now. The doc said that it's one giant bruise from beating from his shoulder down to his mid-back. Mid-back? From the victim's shoulder to his mid-back, he was beaten over such a wide area? Well, I'd say maybe it's a sign the killer had a grudge against Agent Hicks. It wasn't just his head. The killer went all out and hit him multiple times, sir. Scruffy, what is had a grudge against Agent Hicks supposed to mean? I, well, that's, um... Was the wound on the victim's head consistent with the murder weapon detective? Oh, well, they said they were still looking into that, sir. You're completely useless. Yow! Sir, I told you already, you can't go down there. No, you, you remove yourself from my way. What is all that racket? Oh, him. Fuck, what was my, the voice I gave him? My lug... Ah, fuck, man, I forgot. We had an entire stream where I just didn't do his voice. Uh. My luggage, my cargo, they're mine, and I demand you return them to me. We're still investigating the cargo hold. Please understand and have a little patience. I suppose there is no choice. Finally, I think he gave a... Hey, what do you do? You've left me no choice but to use strong force. Yeah! You won't get past me. This is... Wait, that's it. That's what this whole thing has been about. There, there, there's the matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. Doc said it's one giant bruise from a bean to his shoulder down to his mid-back. Let's see here. Hicks was on the trail of an international smuggly wing. 
So how do I want to connect these? Like, I know what we want to say. He fell. He fell. He fucking fell. How do I get to he fell? <laughs> <laughs> Severely beaten. Please work. Nope. Pieces don't fit together quite right. Eh. We're just trial and erroring this shit. Oh, that one worked. Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over, which is why there's extensive bruising over such a wide area. But is that really the correct conclusion to draw from the evidence? The bruise from his shoulder to the middle of his back is one continuous mark. The more suggestion of a single blow to the back. That's the case, then piggyback. It, then the piggyback. <laughs> the piggyback. <laughs> Uh, is much too small to have caused that. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. And couldn't be found. There we go. We're looking for a rather large weapon. You'd think it would stick out. So far, we haven't found anything that resembles any weapon of any sort. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's something we all overlooked from the very beginning. As normally, it's too impossibly big to take it be taken into consideration. What, what was that all about? Was he trying to jump his way down here? Franziska. What do you want? I found it, Franziska. I found the real murder weapon. You did? He... he really jumped! We didn't realize until now, but the answer's been right in front of us the whole time. He might be hurt! We should go check up on him, sirs! There's that pompous attitude of yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. It's coming from a prosecutor with the habit of whipping everyone she comes across. Anyway, if you really are a prosecutor, then you'll back yourself up with evidence. You two aren't listening to me at all, are you? Come on then, show me this real murder weapon you speak of. <laughs> I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolish reasoning for a foolish fool from a foolishly foolish fool meant to fool me! What do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show? Perhaps I should have phrased it as that which caused Agent Hicks's death is incorporeal. Give, forgive me, but I do believe I figured out what was the real cause of death. Freefall. The victim fell from a great height and subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free falling to the ground. E -f -f. Fell to his death? Yes. This is the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising on the back of his head and his back. And the only rational explanation for these injuries is he fell to his death. But, but the murder happened inside this plane! I know. Are you claiming that there was some place in this plane which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, the answer has been right in front of us the entire time. You. You can't mean. Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of the stairs of this very cargo hold. What? Then, then. Well, we're in trouble. We may have a second death on our answers. Hey, you. Tell me you ain't dead, pal. Quiet! Why are you screaming? He's alive! There you have it, Miles Edgeworth. It's not possible that Agent Hicks fell over the railing to his death. That man is living proof of that. I suppose it's true that it's not possible given the current circumstances. The current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. What would have happened then? He would have been a Borginian pancake for sure, sir. I suppose that man over there wouldn't still be breathing. But the reality is that there is a cargo box there. 
so there is no point in entertaining your wild hypothetical scenarios. It may be there now. There's no proof that it was always there. Ha! As if there could have been a window of time and a giant box was not there. Ah, but there was. What? What can I use to show that it's possible the box was always there? <laughs> Good thing I looked over my evidence. You refueled in the Republic of Zengfa? Yes, this flight had a short layover in Zengfa in order to refuel. But that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. But if the box in question was only transferred onto the plane at that time. To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next to the box in question. Ah, it's labeled Zengfa Express. Correct. It was loaded onto the plane in Zengfa. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean that the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe Zengfa leg of the flight. Making a clear drop from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death entirely possible. Ah, but your theory is still very far-fetched. Allow me a chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. The first order of business will be to examine that piece of cargo in more detail. Go investigate the smuggled bed sheets. There we go. Hmm, this is a rather large piece of cargo. The tag on sale, let's see. Alif Red Statue? Never heard of it. Nor I, but all I care about is that we can prove it wasn't here at the time of the crime. Let's get investigating, sir. Look here, do not go about touching my possessions without my permission. Ack, don't rush up on me like that, pal. So this belongs to Mr. LeBlanc, does it? I should see what else I can find out from him. Let's talk to him. Let's talk to Wingding Gaster. From Borginia. I take it that this large piece of cargo belongs to you, Mr. LeBlanc. Of course it is mine! I ship this fine piece of art from Europe! The Alif Red statue is worth 10 million cents. No, maybe much, much more. Hmm, Mr. LeBond's reason for choosing this plane must have been a large cargo hold. 10 million cents? I suggest you start trying to calculate how many packets of noodles that makes, Detective. Don, how did you do that? I feel like you keep getting better and better at seeing right through me every year. No, I grow with each revolution of the planet around the sun. And the distinct impression he continues to madly spin in place. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, so that one million cents, is that in euros or in dollars? Does it really make a difference to our case? Mr. LeBlanc, is there a chance your cargo is related to our murder case? I was wondering if you would allow us to examine it a bit closer. It is a very valuable piece of art, so no, there will be no touching. Let's see here. So about that. This little blonde has something to do with the smuggling ring. It's possible this fake statue was brought on board in Zeng Fa. I think I need to question him a bit further. I was doubting he was a murderer, but now I'm feeling a little more possible. <laughs> Not your statue, Mr. LeBlanc. I wonder if it might be a fake. A what? How dare you say my art is fake? I suspect that your statue might be the target of an international smuggling ring. Don't say such fantastical things. Those thieves would not dare. I have the certification of my cargo right here. Do you mean the cargo certification document? Mr. Zink LeBlanc, why didn't you say so earlier? Please show it to us at once. I can't read this. What does it say? It says, Plano's Day. The cargo is put onto the plane in Europe. And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. Too bad for you. 
The statue was brought on board in Europe, just as it states in his certificate. No, that's... Mean that there was never was a window of time in which the statue wasn't sitting here. I respectfully disagree. We can't discount the theory until I see the statue for myself. Let's take a look here. Document ran in Virginian. The statue was loaded in Europe, yeah. I've been very curious though. Okay, so it's a not the cargo hold. Where that picture was taken. Hmm. Then you can have your wish. Look at it yourself and see that I'm right. This. I know I've seen this somewhere before. Uh, this is the Elite Red? It gives off such a feeling of art, I can practically smell it. This statue has a high amount of historic value after it was unveiled at a museum in Europe. I brought it to this country to exhibit it. So about that. The eyes aren't red. I believe a closer look is warranted here. So this is the infamous Leaf Red statue. Hmm? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you find something? There's something wrong with this picture. We should examine it in more detail. Double checking. There's a few inconsistencies here. But I'm gonna focus on the one that's staring me in the face. Literally. Eureka! <laughs> I'm never gonna get tired of that. Eureka! <laughs> These eyes are awfully orange, don't you think? Yeah, and pretty. They remind me of the sunsets when I was in grade school, sir. I don't think you see what I'm talking about. No, I do, but it's really like the color of the sun when it's set, sir. Ah, the memories. I remember standing out in that field, spinning with my arms out until I felt ill. I don't care about sunset. Focus, detected. What color are the eyes in this photo? Huh? Ah! Sir! They're red! As I thought, this statue is a fake. Mr. LeBlanc? What do you want? Do you not know I am a busy man? I allow you two seconds to your answer. The Elite Red. I suppose this is your pride and joy, is it not? It is the biggest trophy in this European trip. Do you know why I wanted to possess this statue? The trigger started 17 years ago. Better grab a chair, sir. Looks like this is going to be a long story. Mr. LeBlanc, I regret to inform you, and you have my heartfelt sympathy, but... What is that? Sympathy? For what? You'll see. I'd like you to compare the eyes. That large fellow there has very bright and pretty eyes compared to you. I wasn't talking about the two of us. I meant the eyes of the statue in front of us and the one in this photo. Why the sun yelling? Now that... Oh. This is a photo of the statue on display at the museum in Europe. No! Hey, now, now, now. Keep the slurs down, even if they are from the Elder Scrolls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. Now do you see Mr. LeBlanc? The statue before us is a fake. Ah! A fake? I believe that even further examination will be required. That we have confirmed that is indeed a fake. There must be some sort of proof that this was brought on board in Zhang Far. I'll present to you evidence that will resolve the remaining contradiction. Well, it's below that, which is something. It was loaded on board. They were fueling between 4 and 5 a.m. at the transfer point.
Not worth a cent, let alone, not worth a cent, let alone 10 million. Let me examine it. What's this? Statue looks like it's stepping all over its neighbor's cloth under. Kind of resembles its own attitude in a sense, huh? You, what did you say now? Further, my clothing's hem is not being stepped on by anyone. It is too expensive for me to allow that to happen. Please forgive the trespasses of my subordinate. Why should I forgive it if, if the dress passes? Unless it is an expensive dress, you can keep it. Analyzing. I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark. Eureka! Eureka! No. <laughs> what are you going on about? <laughs> Wait, hold up. But it is. It shouldn't be this way, but the statue is on top of the cloth. Supposing that the neighboring piece of cargo is brought on board in Zengfa, there's no way that any part of it should wind up under something from Europe. Which means that this fake statue was smuggled on board in Zengfa. <laughs> but then what about the cargo certificate? Let me ask in return, what about Agent Hicks? Why'd he come down here in the middle of the flight? There's only one reason why, to secure proof of the smuggling activity aboard this flight. So you say, but I don't believe he had to do that mid-flight. We could have just as easily inspected all of the cargo hold after the plane landed. That may be true, however, you have to backwards, Francisca. Sure, Agent Hicks could have waited until after the plane had landed, but he had a reason for coming down to the cargo hold. Suppose he had found the fake at the airport. It would have been after the swap had occurred. At that time, the suspicion would naturally fall onto the statue's owner. We would have no way to prove that the statue was switched without his knowledge. Which means there is someone involved who is forging or modifying cargo certificates. Key doki. I guess the victim knew the real version. This was gonna get nabbed, huh? Yes, when well, this photo could be seen as nothing more than a simple souvenir, was in fact taken to be used as a reference document later on. Next, Agent Hicks had secure proof that the smuggling had taken place. He came down here to take a picture of the cargo hold, a rather empty one at that right before the fake statue could be loaded on board. A photo of the hold missing a valuable piece of cargo would have been proof enough. That all they had to do was hold the Zangfa cargo crew and uh, hold was hold the Zangfa cargo crew and arrest the smuggler. Exactly, but this only goes to prove my theory. The statue was not in the cargo hold during the Yuup Zangfa leg of the trip. There would have been rough. There would have been enough height from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death. Officer, move this statue immediately. I want a thorough examination of the floor underneath now. Miss Von Karma, I'm ready to report my findings. Go on. After moving the Elifred statue out of the way, we tested the area under it with luminol, and there was a reaction. I see. There was a reaction to the luminol, an indication that blood wasn't on that spot. <clears throat> Can we stop looking at it now, sirs? It would seem that my deductions were correct. After all, I suppose it would appear that way. The culprit cleaned up the blood well. How do you think the killer did that? How'd the killer clean up all the blood? With this, of course. Uh, the killer used the bloody cloth I found inside the suitcase to clean up the mess. I see. They had a need to clean up all the blood before the plane landed at Zengfa. Yes, because otherwise the cargo crew would have discovered it during the layover. So, you guys are saying... Then the murder happened before the plane landed in Zhengfa? 
There is no other conceivable timeline for the events of the murder. But that is true that it throws a certain person's testimony in the doubt. That the murder occurred before we landed in Zengfa, this becomes highly suspect. Miss Meal's testimony. Because she said he was in his seat at five. Call Miss Meal's testimony about Agent Hicks in regard to when we departed Zengfa. I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know. She claims Agent Hicks was alive at the time of the service calls, but that totally contradicts the facts, sir. Eh? Why would she lie about something like that? I think the only person who can answer that is Miss Meal herself. To be continued. <sighs> Good timing, too, because the ad is coming up. Now, I would like to get to where there's at least a little bit of music. I like to play the I like to play the game music during waiting screens when I can when I'm able to There she is the booby lady Alrighty so we're going to take a quick little uh, three minute break, break just to get the ads out of the way, kill the pre-rolls for a little bit for anyone who would want to come in later. This is going to be a great opportunity for y'all to get some snacks, get some water, get some drinks, use the bathroom, do whatever y'all humans need to do. And as soon as that's all wrapped up, we'll be getting back and confronting Neil about, well, lying. So with all that being said, bye for now.
Apologies for the wait, everybody. Welcome back. Hope y'all have a good break. Hope y'all got done what you need to get done. Let's go ahead and jump right back in the thing, shall we? Miss Mew. Uh, Miss Mew. Uh, do you recall what you said earlier? About when you answered some service calls as we were departing from Zhanghua? Uh, you said that Mr. Hicks was sitting in his seat at the time. However, that is simply not possible. Because Mr. Hicks was dead long before we ever touched down in Zhangfa. Uh... This can be meal! Um... Maybe I didn't see what I thought I did? No one could make a mistake so large, Miss Meal. Um... But I make that kind boo-boo all the time. <laughs> it's going nowhere. There must be a better way of resolving this contradiction. Very well, Miss Meal. If you please tell me about your alibi during the time span, from just before we were to land at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Are you telling me I'm a suspect, Mr. Edgeworth? What the fuck? <laughs> those, those dead fucking eyes in that little like um, whatever you want to call it, just killed me. <laughs> Uh, oh, um, yeah. From three to four, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room. All by my lonesome self. Mm, oh, um, yeah. And from five to six, I was in the flight attendant's room. All by my lonesome self. Who's a man supposed to react to a testimony like that? This meal! Wake up! Huh? She fell asleep again. Looks like the only way I'm going to be able to wake her up is by pressing her. Hey, yo. <laughs> How about from four to five? Yeah, from three to four, I was in the flight attendant's room all by my list himself. Press her. I will press her. So you were all alone the entire time, were you? Yeah, no one else even popped in their head to say hi. Oh, well, I think I just, well, I think a contradiction just popped in to say hi. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? I guess. Let me look over things. Left in the attendant and left in the attendance room. Okay, yeah. This meal, there was a clear contradiction embedded in your testimony. Uh, what are you talking about? It's not possible that you were alone in the attendance room the whole time from 5 to 6 a.m. I wonder if you would be so kind as to take a look at this receipt, Miss Meal. Huh? You see? Or what? So the suitcase Miss Nero bought. Now, if I may direct your attention to the timestamp. As you can see, it clearly says 5.40 a.m., Miss Nero. Yes. Uh, why is the killer here? I thought you'd have her locked up by now. I requested that she be present as a witness so that we may straighten out your complex lie. Now then, Mr. Nero, between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m., you took a trip from first class down to the first floor and flight shop, correct? Yes, I went to the shop to buy a suitcase, after which I went straight to the attendance room to drop it off. Did you see Miss Meal there at the time? Um, no. So, Miss Meal, where were you really between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m.? Uh... The Scabby Meal! Uh, uh, um, the bathroom? I'll be the one that asks the questions here. Yeah, maybe that's it. I probably just missed her. Nature calls, you know? Do you take me for a fool? It was a little too convenient to be true. Um, but it's the truth. Cross my heart. 
I don't have enough conclusive proof to counter argue her at this stage. You don't believe me, do you? But please, let me give me a chance and hear me out. Reason for suspicion. Welcome in, foe of color, and first time chatter, first time victim. Welcome to Dragon's Gash Valley. Hope you're gonna have a good time with me, uh, uh, trying to confront Booby Lady about lying. Mm. Uh, I like her, I bet you do, Cece. I bet you do. <laughs> uh. Alrighty. Look, I know you're suspecting me because I'm one of the crew. But you think that maybe you should also respect Miss Rhoda too? She's the one in charge of the elevator keycard and in the shop, you know? Yes, me, that makes her super suspicious. Please leave Mr. Nero out of the conversation. Only you are under suspicion for now. I don't get it. Why are you coming from Miss Rhoda all of a sudden? Oh, now I get it. Maybe you got your eye on Miss Rhoda. <laughs> of course I'm keeping an eye on her. I can't very well let her escape, can I? Never mind. But you want to know something? Miss Rhoda actually kind of like... I have absolutely no interest in people who can't appreciate my sense of design. It's not the time for this sort of talk. Uh, Alright, let's see here. I'm on the crew, but you think that maybe you should all suspect Miss Rota too. The one charger elevator keycard in the shop, you know? Let's look over my evidence. Uh, leaf red. Autopsy. You do. It's Meal's testimony. I'm pressing on this. What are you in charge of, Miss Meal? Um, I take care of the attendance room. It doesn't count. Uh, but I spend so much time in there, it might as well be a responsibility. Mr. Edgeworth, Cammy is very talented in languages. So she assists passengers who may not speak English. Especially those who speak Virginian. She's the only one on this flight who is fluent. Oh, you mean that kind of what I am in charge of? Why didn't you say so in the first place? What else could I have meant? Yeah, so I'm really good at Borginian. She's fluent in Borginian. I suppose you're in charge of processing documents in Borginian? Yeah, I take care of anything that has to do with Borginian. Hmm, very interesting. You ask me, that makes her super suspicious. I'm, all I'm in charge of are the attendance room and some Virginian stuff. Do I present it? Yeah, I think I'll press first. So what exactly do you do as the one in charge of some Virginian stuff? Um, I do stuff like translate things from and into Virginian. Cammy's the only member of the crew who understands Virginian, Mr. Edgeworth. This meal, I take it, then, is... Uh, this meal, I take it, then, that is your job to process all the Borginian paperwork. Yeah, see, I totally pull my weight around here. So it would appear. Perhaps I should ask her for a few more details about her work, and... Miss Meal, it's very unladylike to push suspicion onto someone else. That's not what I'm doing at all. I'm just saying Miss Rhoda is very sus. Like Among Us. There you go pushing everything all down again. Um, I don't get what you're saying. It must be a really abstract concept, huh? The only thing abstract to you is the landscape inside your head. Alright. We're gonna present that. So you're the only one in this flight crew that speaks Borginian. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I studied abroad in Virginia for a while. 
Mm. If that's the case, then the signature on this document belongs to you, doesn't it? This is a falsified piece of documentation with only one purpose. To lead anyone who read it to believe that Mr. LeBong's statue was loaded in Europe. The only person who could have either prepared or processed this document in Morginian is you, Miss Meal. Without your participation, the smuggling of the Elif Red could not have occurred. Don't sleep while I'm pulling my finger at you! Oh, I wouldn't dream of falling asleep on you, Mr. Edgeworth. It is exactly as you say. You confessing to having participated in the smuggling? No, far from it. It's true that I was the one who signed on that off on that document. But you can't use that fact alone to make your aggregation of smuggling stick. There is no direct correlation after all. All you have is my signature on a piece of paper. Really? All you did was sign it? I neglected to check if the cargo had been loaded onto the plane properly. So sorry about that. It seems that she's finally woken up. This is going to be one tough fight. Suppose, and this is just a supposition, even if I was involved in the smuggling, you can't throw the charge of murder on me just like that. If you were involved in the smuggling, you would have a strong motive to kill. Agent Hicks was in the middle of an investigation regarding a smuggling ring, and just when he was about to close in, he's killed by a member of that ring. Well, did you ever stop to think that maybe Rhoda is the smuggling ring member? After all, unlike me, Rhoda has access to many things on this plane for work purposes. Hmm, so perhaps there is some element of a setup at play in this case. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I wasn't talking about you, I meant the killer. First it was myself, and now it's Mr. Nero who is under the microscope. Seems to me that our killer is going to great lengths to pin this crime on anyone they can. You have no proof that Rhoda is being set up or that she isn't. Actually, I believe that she was indeed the intended target from the very beginning. I believe that the plan was to push all the blame for the crime on her. And this evidence will prove my suspicions. This proves that the killer was out to frame Mr. Nero from the very beginning. I would think maybe the suitcase... Yeah, the suitcase. I just picked a little pain on such a dutiful lady. Exactly, and she has cool cube hair. Take that. The killer could have hidden the body anywhere, and yet they chose the suitcase. Why is that? Was it was to move the body up from the lower deck to the first floor? However, why go through the trouble to do so? <laughs> the only way all of these actions make sense is if the killer had wanted to frame Mr. Nero for the murder. Miss Tenira buys a suitcase on every flight she works without fail. How she actually goes about doing that on even the best pay for a flight attendant is beyond me, but should her suitcase be switched with one containing the victim's body, that would put her in a very tight spot. Unfortunately for the killer, the turbulence put an end to that plan. Huh. Wasn't enough time to put the body back in the suitcase. Ergo, they made do with whatever was at hand, adapted their plan, and tried to frame me as I lay unconscious on the floor from the turbulence. The killer then went to hide the suitcase on the in-flight shop, and brought the piggy bank back to the elevator in order to fabricate a false weapon. A lot of work for a fruitless endeavor, wouldn't you agree? Sounds like the killer had a tough time too, huh? I mean, why did the killer need to frame someone that badly anyway? This is because of the special circumstances surrounding this particular case. Special circumstances dictate the need for the killer to frame someone. The killer was at a loss of what to do with Agent Hicks' body. But just as so happened, there were a bunch of empty suitcases nearby. Wait, no, this is not what I was going at. This is not what I was going at. He's an Interpol agent. <laughs> He's an Interpol agent. That's why. <laughs> Dictate the need for the killer to frame someone. Uh, 
Ugh. Where the murder took place. Special circumstance is simply that the murder took place on a plane mid-flight. No matter which country custom, comes is quite strict in this day and age. So no matter what you do, the chances that the body will be found is very high. Therefore, there is no choice but to frame either Miss Tenero or myself. In other words, the only one who fits within the boundaries of the criminal's movements is not Miss Tenero or myself, but you, Miss Camille. Only you and you alone could be the killer. Eh, uh, and... We done already. I was about to fall asleep again. Anyway, let's be honest here. You don't have anything on me other than a whole lot of circumstantial evidence. Ugh. I can see the outline of how the murder occurred, but I have no definitive evidence. And there isn't a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for. Something that I still can't quite fit into the big picture. I don't have any actual evidence. I thought not. But that's because it went missing, and still is. Missing? What do you mean by that? In the complex puzzle is this case, there was one piece of it that I kept getting stuck on. That is the victim's cell phone. Franziska, you were waiting at the airport for a phone call from Agent Hicks's cell phone. Or at least that's what you told me. That's right. But Agent Hicks's cell phone could not be found at the crime scene. You mean the killer took the phone with them? Precisely. I suspect that if we were to find that phone, it would lead us to the killer. <laughs> Come on. Get serious. If the victim fell to his death from that height, wouldn't his phone break as well? We won't know that until we try a little experiment, will we? Francisca, I'd like to ask for your assistance. You know the victim's phone number, do you not? Of course I do. Agent X is bone. It's ringing from somewhere, sir. I hear it, detective. And where is it coming from? Miss Meal, wake up. Better find that cell phone fast. Flight attendant's room. Okay. <laughs> the phone. It's gonna be in Teneros, isn't it? You've no stone on turn, Detective Gum. Sure, we must find it. The ringing is coming from somewhere around here. But it's not here, sir. Do I have such a bad feeling about where we're going to find the phone? What? No, it can't be. This has got to be the victim's cell phone. Just whose locker is this, sir? It's Miss Tenero's. What? Makes sense I covered that. So, Mr. Edgeworth, how'd it go? Where'd you find the phone? I found it in the flight attendant's room, in Miss Tenero's locker. But what? But... Rhoda Tenero! I don't know anything about the phone! It wasn't me! It wasn't me! Miss Von Karma, is it? I suggest you arrest Miss Rhoda Tenero right away. Wait, I have a theory. This is related to the incident with the keycard. When the killer went to steal the keycard, they conveniently stashed a cell phone in Miss Tenero's locker at the same time. This is related to the keycard, alright? In the same way that we have zero proof that the killer did just that. <clears throat> the only voice that thinks the truth is evidence. That is the one bird we cannot ignore. 
What should I do? When this goes right, I can't offer basis conjectures at this point. All right then, why did the culprit take the cell phone from Agent Hicks? It must have something very incriminating on or in it. What now, Miles Edgeworth? It's not over yet. We have yet to figure out why the killer took the phone. What? Inside this phone lies the final piece of incriminating evidence that will point us to our killer. We need to examine this phone in more detail. Alrighty. Screen's cracked, that ain't good. The CD is broken. Now the screen, you can't even place a call with this. There is, however, a battery pack. Which I can't examine because we're stupid. It's a camera lens. Come to think of it, I wonder. How exactly was Angel planning to preserve the crime scene of a smuggling? Francisca, I need you to confirm something. This cell phone, can it take pictures? Mr. Edgeworth, I can't believe you don't know about this kind of basic stuff, sir. This looks like a very similar model to my own. And mine can take photos just fine. Do you think Agent X could have taken some pictures with this? In particular, pictures and evidence for a smuggling case? If so, I'd say there'd be some very inconvenient photos in here for our smuggler's killer. But the phone's all busted up, sir. Even a super prosecutor can't repair a broken phone. I'll find a way, don't you worry about that. Yeah, ugh. may I back to sleep now. The LCD screen on the inside and outside are broken, that's for sure. But also reason enough to believe that the killer wasn't able to erase the data. What? What do you mean by that, Franziska? It looks like our killer isn't very familiar with electronics. This phone still rang when it called it, meaning that only the LCD screens are broken. It's possible that the photos are still there inside, waiting to be accessed. All we need to do is transfer the data to my phone. Franziska, your phone, if you please. Very well. It's transferring. All right, displaying it now. This is... Agent Hicks was most certainly trying to obtain some evidence if it was a smuggling case. Hey, the Elite Reds don't wear this pic, sir. This has no meaning as a piece of evidence in this murder case, right? Ouch, she's right. There's not much we can find out from us about Agent Hicks's killer, sir. Is this it? Is this the end? Is there really nothing in this photo that we can use? There's a suitcase. The fact that all the suitcases are here in this photo is odd. Agent Hicks was still alive at the time. So what exactly is so odd about the suitcases that have be here being... Uh, I, I didn't even read that. <laughs> yes, well I was only pointing out things that are different between now and then. Your off-topic ramblings have put this attendant to sleep yet again, Miles Edwards. Uh, look if Sleepy had here a rude awakening, a deafening objection and a contradiction. Railing. What's all this? Hmm? Oh, their cargo shipped them from Virginia to Zengva. So the reason they aren't here now is that they were dropped off in Zengva. Mr. LeBlanc, can you tell me about the contents of the boxes? Unfortunately, there is no English writ on them anywhere. Hmm. One cluster of boxes is written in Virginian. It says, it is cloth in English. Cloth? Could it be? Is this where the killer... What? What is that for that scary face? Miss Meal. Yes. It appears that Agent Hicks was no ordinary investigator. He left us with a piece of evidence after all. A striking piece that will point out who his killer is. Ha! <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't force your mistaken reading of a simple picture, Mr. Edgeworth. Treating cargo in this piece of evidence will point us straight to the killer. Take that. 
I don't know where Edgeworth's going with this, but I'm rolling with it. What is that supposed to prove? The killer used this piece of cloth to wipe up the blood they had spilt. There was one thing that bothered me this whole time. Where did it come from? And now I have finally found my answer in this very photo. The cargo that was unloaded in Zengval had cloth written on it. In Borginium, that is. This is where the killer grabbed a piece from it to clean up the blood with. That's right. The killer was someone who could read and understand Borginium. And the only crew member that fits that description is you, Miss Camimio. <laughs> That's pretty flimsy. The killer probably searched through all the boxes looking for something to use. When you're frantic, you don't care if the box is in English or Virginian. Sorry, but I cannot agree with your assessment of the killer's indiscriminate nature. What? There was no need for the killer to tear through boxes at random at all. When the killer supposedly could not comprehend Virginian, well... Logically, the killer would have opened this box first. The bed sheets actually were a crucial part of the case! <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, those bed sheets weren't illegal. Those were the most legal bed sheets in existence. Precisely, and beside bed sheets would be perfect for cleaning up blood, wouldn't you say? So what are you trying to say? That if I were the criminal. This box of bedsheets would have been what I would have spotted first. However, the killer chose to use some Virginian cloth. Do you have an explanation for that? The killer didn't want anyone to know that the real scene of the crime was his cargo hold, so they were afraid to leave signs that the box for the sheets had been opened. However, the Virginian cloth, well, that's a horse of a different color. Because the killer knew that it was going to be unloaded in the Republic of Zingfar. That's right. This is why the Borginian cloth was used, and the only Borginian reader on board who could make such a calculated decision is you, Camille. You and you alone. <laughs> it would be very easy for us to confirm if any of the boxes were resealed. All we would have to do is contact the Zengpa authorities in time. We may even find other evidence to incriminate our killer within those boxes. <laughs> So what do you say, Miss Meal? Why not confess to your crime here and now? Or would you rather wait out and see what our investigation from Zeng Ba has to offer? Intense game of bubble bottle there. He, he was Interpol. I couldn't stop it. I brought him here. He started taking pictures. I I couldn't be found out. I was scared. I was in trouble. I... 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 I, I We finished making all the arrangements to take the suspect in, sir. Very good, detective. What about the smuggling route? Did she say anything about that? They're taking her down to the precinct now. Hopefully we can get more out of her there. However, when, whenever we approached the topic, she just started foaming at the mouth. It was scary, sir. She probably wasn't prepared to commit a murder all of a sudden. One thing is for sure, the ring behind this whole mess means serious business. Looks like there's a lot more to this case than meets the eye. Mr. Edgeworth. I just wanted to say how much I appreciate everything you did. Thank you very much. It was nothing. In fact, I should be the one thanking you for your cooperation. But truly, if it wasn't for you, I... I might not be here right now. Instead, I can continue to serve our passengers as a flight attendant. Um, I hope that, well... Please accept this as a token of my appreciation. Th that's... I see. You don't have to take it if you don't want it. N no I mean, I would never turn down a lady's generous offer. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm sure it will serve you well. And remember, we here at iFly Airlines are always ready to serve Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. 
Now I must bid you farewell. May all your skies be blue, no matter where you go. Can't believe we wound up investigating the whole day, sir. But boy, was it fun. Speak for yourself. My day was filled with earthquakes, elevators, and false charges. <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye out for that suitcase when I play through the Ace Attorney games. Yeah, really. They Ace Attorney loves to do callbacks all the fucking time. <laughs> By the way, where's Franziska? Oh, she's filing out some paperwork for the custom. She's filling out some customs paperwork for departure. Departure? Yeah, Miss Von Kam is always really busy, sir. We've been flying from country to country to chase down some leads for gotten a case. Detective, can you cancel the car I had you reserve earlier? You got it, sir. Franziska. I thought I told you when you first landed I have no time for idle chatter. I have no intention of wasting your time. However, it has been a while since we last met. I also have no time for such familiar reminiscences. Just who do you think I am? You are Franziska von Gama, a very proud prosecutor deserving of much respect. <laughs> Until only a little while ago, I was but a wretched mutt who was always losing to you. A dancing parrot living in her life on the, on the name and fame of her invincible father built. True, your father, Manfred von Karma, didn't lose a single case for 40 years as a prosecutor. However, I wouldn't say he was invincible. What are you talking about? The group I'm on the trail of is a little more troublesome than most. The smuggling route we found this time is only one sliver of a big picture. Sounds like a dangerous assignment. You really don't have to worry. I can take care of myself. Yes, I suppose you can. Plus, there's another agent on this case with me. Oh, another agent? He's a strong among Interpol agents and has a high successful arrest rate, and I'm gonna make sure he does not get killed this time. Who knows? You may even run into him one day. Hmm? I was simply caught up in this one case. I hardly see why we would cross paths. I suppose. But I doubt he would say the same. I'm not following you. You'll understand soon enough. The fight has only just begun, my ass Edgeworth. I'll be back in this country soon enough. And when I am, you can be sure I'll pay you back in full. And just like that, she's gone, ah, huh, sir. Thank goodness. I can finally rest easy knowing I won't have to watch out for a whip. Detective Gumshoe, I want to thank you for all your help and cooperation. Oh, it was nothing, sir. I was just happy to be able to work with you again. <laughs> I think I'm gonna celebrate buying a little extra salt to my ancient noodles tonight. Just how much do you cut his salary by, Franziska? Detective, I was wondering if you might give me a ride down to the prosecutor's office. Sure thing, sir. I'll even fly down the road in the patrol car if you want. Don't make me remind you, Detective. Safety first. Thus, I solved the first case upon my arrival home. Franziska von Karma, the smuggling route she was after. Leaders of that ring had already put their trump card into play. The players on the other side of this wall, they would begin to make themselves known during the next incident. The phone! Edgeworth speaking. Finally, I called no- I called who knows how many times earlier, but I couldn't get through. And you are? Ah, have you forgotten about my voice, Miles, my boy? Mr. Amano, Ernest Amano, correct? Ah, so you do remember me. I know it's rather sudden, but I can't ask this of anyone else. There's been an incident, Miles. My son. He's been kidnapped. I forgot who Amano was. If he was in a previous game, he might not be. <laughs> oh. There we go. The kidnap turnabout. Hit that save button. Once that is done, that was going to be it for the day. We did not stream very long at all, but, well, oh, this guy, this guy, I know who this guy is. All right. <laughs> I've seen him. But anyways, let's go back to chatting real quick. All righty. Yeah, so that's going to be it for today. I do want to, like, 
keep things broken up in a mostly sensible manner. So I'll cut stream a little short for now. But don't worry, I'll be sending y'all, hopefully not too tired folks, somewhere else. I think I know where I'm sending ya. Let me refresh, make sure I'm seeing everybody and everything and everyone. Okay, yeah, I know where we're going. We're gonna head, I'm gonna send y'all to Excalibur. He's a night VTuber, he's a friend of uh, Nova, he's playing Helldivers right now. And Helldivers is cool, so you should totally, wait. Uh, alrighty. Never mind. thought I saw something. But we're gonna be going over there, and we're going to uh, show him a little love today. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit that start raid button. He's a friend of Nova, he's cool. And we like cool people here. Last I checked, we better still. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna go watch them. I'm gonna send y'all to go watch some democracy in action for a little bit. But outside of that, tomorrow, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to be having a big collab with, um, it's gonna be with Viz. And, um, we're gonna be doing Gartic Phone with a bunch of our uh, friends. And it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. I look forward to it. Outside of that, um, I should probably talk on next week. Okay, so next week, I'm going on vacation for Easter. I will not be streaming for most, if or if all that week. I might have, a, I'll be coming back on Thursday. I might have a stream then, I might not. It's going to be entirely Gorilla, but if I do have it, I'll announce it. It's probably gonna be at 7 p.m. Just a heads up for y'all. We're not gonna have much of anything next week or the week after that, but I'll get into that um, another time. But outside of that, Hope y'all had a good time. Hope y'all have a good day, night, afternoon, wherever y'all are, whatever the fuck y'all are doing. And with all of that being said, bye for now. Y'all have a good one.